I'm into rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, John. Hello. I would ask how the week's been, but... <laughs> I have been lovely. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today's topic's quite far-reaching, but we'll start with Maidam. Yeah, I went to Maidam in uh, 1986 with the, um, the Cherry Bombs promo, um, Hot Girls in Love. Important Records, New York, uh, Steve Severin. He did really like it. He said, if you want to come over, you can make four promos. A fucking hell, yeah. Yeah, right. So uh, we went over, me and Karen, we took our camera. Ron Shans, we filmed him in Maxwell's New Jersey. We went to Sweet Pain in a saw rehearsal rooms in Manhattan, a Dancing Hoods in Long Island and crumb suckers by the CBGBs. They were all pretty good takes, but, you know... Nothing really more came from those bands. Yeah. Crumb suckers at CBGBs had film all outside it, inside it. It looked a bloody good video, but it never really took off. Yeah. Right. You met this Steve fella from being at Maidem. Yeah. And how did you actually get into Madam? Because I know it's exclusive for... Well, it was Cherry Red every time. Right. So you'd get in on the Cherry Red front. Yes. But then you would represent yes. Jet Jetty Sound. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And that Cherry Bombs video you had, was that your most recent work? So you'd yes. go around showing people. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was that quite an experience to be had, Madam? Yes, it was. I, I would say we probably went to... Maybe about ten. Was it just a wild week spent networking <laughs> during the day? Oh then... yeah, <laughs> fucking hell! It was hard work. <laughs> was it? Oh fucking hell! You've done a lot of work with Toy Doors up until this point, and work continues. Yeah, they had a second video to make. Uh, they filmed it live at the Club Foot in London, uh, and about a week we went back to Sunderland and continued more of it like Keys a Thief a, a magnificent PC Stoker a shot in the, the dark outside and uh, you won't be merry on our North Sea Ferry and you know I'm imagining with the amount of work that you guys did you, you must have become quite friendly with them I did yes yes I haven't heard from him since that, since that that day, I, I oh, think. Oh really? Yeah, wow. yeah. And I'll what, keep an eye on them, uh, but. Uh, and what came of those videos? How how did they do in uh, terms of release? I think they did so well. Did your audience like, take the toy dolls then quite well? Yes, I think they did. The punk audience really did did take to them. Yeah, they were of that world, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Karen being uh, to stay down in Devon with uh, uh, Dave Brock uh, uh, stayed the night. What a bloody magnificent place. Uh, we actually went to the Preston at uh, Guildhall, packed out. We just did it with two cameras. Pretty dark. We had to uh, go on 9DB right. game. Oh, really? Yeah. So the image becomes quite noisy. Yeah, well, point. yeah, it's, but it, it works. It works. Right. So uh, for this show then, what, why the two cameras? What Was it because it was Hawkwind? And... Oh yeah, uh, we didn't know whether it would be a good release, but in the end we uh, ended up doing it. Right. Yeah. But uh, we were always uh, struggling to find the, the means to, to do it, to have the tapes ordered, but they had to do it. You mean financially, the means? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Peter um, Lawrence and Martin Goldschmidt, uh, who ran Cooking Vinyl, uh, it was a fledgling company. They'd only released a record. I think we were the, the Poison Girls. And uh, Peter Lawrence w went out to America, uh, went to this Texas music festival he came across this girl uh, who was 
sitting cross-legged in a circle of girls or boys playing and recorded it. When he brought it back and played it to them, uh, they, they were gobsmacked. Uh, and he recorded the Campfire Texas tapes. But I mean, heck, they were good. They got it out re to release and uh, it sold. Uh, it was heading towards a quarter of a million sales. I, I got invited to make a film of them. Two days, I think, we, we picked her up and we went to, first of all, Radio York, where she filmed 4-4 um, Troubadour, doing all that, uh, the Red Rhino. In the end, uh, she went to the Newcastle, uh, do a campus crusade. About ten days later, we went to film them in, the, in London at the Town and Country. A fantastic show, a fantastic show. You know, 5 a.m. in Amsterdam is a classic. And uh, if you uh, watch it now somewhere, you can see the pleasure of the piece. And that, that, that 5 a.m. in Amsterdam is a piece that um, Karen put together as a, for a promo vid for Michelle Schott. Yeah, 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 yeah. When we'd been to Amsterdam with the Turnpike Cruisers, we uh, took a Super 8 and filmed loads of shit. And, uh, <laughs> 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 well, you know. <laughs> and um, it was bloody good. Yeah. It was bloody good. And so she took this video footage and then used it to make Fabian. Yeah, Amsterdam yeah, 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 yeah. With Michelle Shock. Yeah, Shock's yeah, song. yeah, yeah. And how was that received by Michelle? <sighs> you know, after three years of working awards and lawyers, it just said you should release it. And uh, we did too. There was a back and forth between you and Michelle Shock and the lawyers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Polygram uh, took away uh, Michel Schott, the Der label now. They didn't like it. I don't know why. One day I was going to London and uh, I was on the M1 somewhere and uh, I got a call on my mobile. We've got Michel Schott in the office here. What? Uh, and a boyfriend. God almighty, I phoned, I phoned up Polygram and complained to them and... I don't know what happened to it. It was a, a nasty affair, a nasty affair. Uh, going back about three years, we, we had a, about 140 turnpike cruisers right through to Strange Bones. She, uh, I had it taken off, 5 a.m. in Amsterdam. Wow. It, it's one of my favorite promos. She had it removed from your list? Yeah. And when was that, when did she have it removed? About three years ago. So this is quite a while after. Oh yeah, about 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Mm.